So let's get him out of the country. That's what it is ultimately. And I do believe that EDO, behind all of this, are just hooligans. They are people that are ex-football hooligans and that they need to be quashed, actually. Kadir believes that the EDL were fueling the idea that Muslims were getting a much better deal than the white working class. Kevin Carroll certainly seemed to think that this was true. He claims that predominantly Muslim areas like this one enjoy much better facilities and services than his. State-of-the-art equipment, all safety and all the modern spec and stuff. You can see the money they've spent here, and then you look at where, what we've got, where we live. It's just equal, equal playing fields, you know, let's have, let's have a quality across the board. That's all it is. And then what, in terms of ethnic makeup, what sort of area is, is this? It's predominantly uh, Muslim Asian. And it's not their fault they're getting the, the parks, it's the um, people pulling the purse strings. I mean, this should have a park like that, but so should all the other parks, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a park like that, but have one everywhere. Put parks like that in all the areas for everybody. And that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fuck off, because I'm fucking really uncomfortable. <laughs> I couldn't even think straight. Well, I'm fucking, my face is a bit thing, and there's people driving, could just drive past now and then fucking give me the large one. He then took me to Farley Hill, the traditionally white working class estate where he grew up. This is as good as it gets for us. I mean, I think this was probably installed in the 70s. As you can see, it's all the latest state of the art. You know, two strings, because we have only got, we've only got two kids in Farley Hill. You know, we just feel like we've been completely abandoned culturally and financially by the council and the local government. They haven't got a voice. Every sector of the community in Luton Town is praised and, and funded and encouraged, except for the English. Now, that is outrageous. That has to be fixed. I met up with local Labour councillor, Sean Timoney, to see how funding in Luton was allocated. Okay, we can see that here. She wanted to show me a new park, just a five minute walk away from Kevin's house. This is a park still being finished, is it? Yeah, it's being worked on at the moment. You can see where the fencing's going around there. And this is a short walk from the Farley Hill community centre. Yeah, yeah, five minute walk, bring you around here. You can see there's loads of kids out here, there's loads of open land. So to say that there's nothing around here is, is ludicrous, really. This park we're spending um, almost £100,000 on. You can see that there's some new equipment already started. There's some on, on the way. They've got the new wooden play area just been added there. But Kevin hadn't just claimed that there was no investment in Farley Hill. He also believed he knew why. So Kevin also said that that the predominantly Muslim areas are getting much better funding and better services than the traditionally white working class areas? No, it's, it's entirely untrue. Um, we, we don't spend our money in the town on any particular areas for any particular group of people. All our parks are being refurbished, updated with new equipment, play equipment for the children. Um, and it's ludicrous to say that we would spend money on one particular area for one particular ethnic group because it's absolutely untrue. Kevin's claims looked even more tenuous when I discovered something about his past. During the 2007 local elections, he had nominated the BNP candidate here in Farley Hill. I had to ask him why he would do such a thing, and I wasn't sure how he'd react. You've said to us in the past that you're not a racist, you don't associate with racists, you want anything to do with racists. No. Did you nominate a candidate for the BNP in the 2007 local elections? 2006, 2007. Now, I'm, I remember this. Is, is this what the council are saying? Each candidate has to get ten nominees, yeah. and your name and your address is one of those nominees. Yeah, I know what they're up to here. Hoodwinked is the word. Right, let me make a quick call and I'll answer that question, right? I want to put this to bed because I'm going to get it put to bed because I don't want to keep coming up because I was more of a victim than... 
All right, love. Yeah, come round to the, um, if the back, you'll give you a round of it. Out back in. Now, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to insinuate that I'm a racist and I'm a BNP member and what have you. I've never been a member of the BNP. I'm not a racist. In fact, that's, that's quite laughable. But how can you not be a racist or be against racism and support a candidate for the BNP? Well, I'll tell you exactly how that happened. The, um... Oh, honey. This is my daughter. It's her 21st birthday. All right, babe. I've got to take her out soon, so I'll, I'll answer your questions and I've got to come take her out and spoil her, yeah? So that's why it is. So what actually happened was I was in my house with my family in the back garden doing something. The door wrapped. I opened the door. There's a well-dressed couple standing there. Um, I didn't know anything about the BNP. Wasn't interested in politics, really. But the first question I asked them was, are you racist? And they said, no. Now, that's the biggest thing for me. It's obviously, I'm not racist, because I'm the son of immigrants, and this is my daughter, who I love dearly. I said, OK, that's that out of the way. What can I do for you? So they give you this form. About, and there's a ten-point list, and it was keep the pound, stay out of Europe, uh, British jobs for British workers, um, all this stuff, that, that sort of stop mass immigration, that you'd have to be a, a lunatic not to agree with. Yeah, all right, look, sound. Signed it. No problem. There you go. All the best. See you later. But I'm hoodwinked, so I was very angry about that at a later date. OK. Any, anyone non-white can't join the BNP. Back then, no, anyone non-white wouldn't even be able to join the BNP. Well, I didn't know any of that. I don't know anything about the BNP, because I wasn't into politics and I wasn't into BNP this or whatever BNP. I was just living my life. Listen, I'm not BNP and I'm not racist. That's the main thing. And neither is the EDL. If people are looking at the EDL and what the EDL are about and, you know, if there were one or two little things, if there was one person doing a Nazi salute, one person singing a racist song, they might be able to say, OK, it's just, just one person. It doesn't represent the whole lot. But there are so many things, racist songs, violence, racist gestures, you nominating a BNP candidate. Why shouldn't people think they're just the same as the other right-wing groups you've seen in the past? Because you have to use your loaf. Um, in a movement like the EDL, which is non-racist, non-violent, peaceful protesting, you're always going to get the idiot. You and, and because I've been hood, hoodwinked myself, listen, I'm only human. Everybody can be hoodwinked. Me. Kevin's claim to have been hoodwinked into nominating a local BNP candidate was unconvincing. But perhaps he'd been naive. The EDL's defence against allegations of racism was now familiar. They had non-white supporters and even family members. But that isn't proof that they aren't racist against Muslims. I joined up with Gaz and Lee from Stoke as they set off for another EDL demo in Dublin. Could the EDL finally demonstrate without the day being marred by violence and racism? The demo was in protest against the building of a new super mosque. But for Gaz and Lee, it also seemed to be about having a good day out. It looked like an EDL demo was the highlight of their social calendar. So you join the division, you travel with the division, that's your lads. It seemed like a bunch of lads who were proud to stand up, you know, chanting, singing songs about England. Just, I like the culture as well, you know, you go out, you meet loads of new people. And it's, it's a nice thing. You don't get that very much anymore. And what other sort of things happen in your hometown that made you join the EDL? We're not going to change anything. We're not going to change anything. But you might as well do something. Better than sitting in the house and doing fuck all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Van der Berkel and all that. Fucking Bob on. It's like it should be done. Van der Berkel. Wait, wait. So why, why should they be able to walk around him? Where's the fucking problem? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ja, das kommt. Ja, ja. 